Hey guys, hope everything, hope everybody's doing well today. Want to thank you all for joining our conversation today. Um, it's how to lead your brewery to faster growth. Um, my name's Alec Johnson. I am the solution engineer, head of industry here at Ecos. I've actually joined the company back in 2015. So I was employee, depending on who you ask, I was employee three or four. I got hired at the same time as another one of our colleagues. Um, in my time over six years at Ecos, I've helped over 1,500 customers around the world see the benefits of Ecos. So a little background on what Ecos provides as a value. We really have the four pillars, so we're going to be able to drive efficiencies, eliminating the manual processes and duplicate entries, being able to power growth so we get complete visibility into your cost of goods sold and key business metrics, improving communication so you can forecast and manage the inventory better, and end-to-end -end business management, the inventory, production, sales, and accounting. And again, we'll touch on the four pillars that Ecos provides, the inventory, being able, able to, excuse me, being able to manage your inventory in real time with a visual floor plan, and being able to plan and order your raw ingredients. On the production side, being able to easily compare production costs and outcomes so you can plan for your future batches. On the sales side, able to create and send sales invoices from any device. And then on the accounting side, being able to generate the TTB and excise tax reports. Well, we do also have seamless integrations with QuickBooks and Xero on the accounting side, and then Square and Arrived on the point of sale side. And now I'd like to introduce um, my colleague here on this talk today, Patrick. Yeah, hi, how's it going guys? Um... As you can see on the slide, my name is Patrick Lively. I'm the president of Lively Beer Works here in Oklahoma City. I have over 10 years experience in brewery management. Um, I also have quite a bit of experience on the trade association side. I was a founding member of our association here in Oklahoma. Um, and currently, I've been at Lively Beer Works for three years. Um, prior to that, I was at two other breweries here locally, um, serving in different managerial roles. Um, so I'm excited to be here. Awesome. Yeah, well, we're glad glad to have you here as well. Uh, why don't you give us a little background on your brewery? Yeah, so Lively Beer Works, like I said, founded in 2018. Um, we spent most of 2018 and 2019 um, getting off the ground. We did a, a small amount of um, contract brewing, um, draft-only stuff, and then really um, December 2019 was when we got our facility up and going and kind of full-scale production. Um so as you can see there, in 2020, we hit about 2.4 thousand barrels in production. Uh, we had six times growth in our distribution outlets, um, that in large part due to getting our facility open. And I would say that like, you know, we're gonna talk about extensively. Um, we save, you know, anywhere from 45 minutes to a couple hours a day using the Ecos QuickBooks and Arrived integration. Awesome. Perfect. Now, when did you guys decide to start using Ecos and kind of what brought you to that decision? Was there a specific pain point that you ran into or? Yeah, I mean, really from the beginning, uh, I, one, I didn't want to switch systems a couple years in. I've done that a couple times. I've used, um, you know, varying other systems. And so uh, when I founded Lively, one of the priorities was to find, um, you know, a brewery back of house software that can manage across platforms and obviously being a startup cost was important um efficacy was important um and then you know being a young brewery we felt like we could sort of solve the the wrongs of breweries and i really like the the cloud-based approach of ecos being able to access it anywhere in the world and so from the very beginning is when we integrated ecos um and i think we saved ourselves a lot of time and headache by doing that, we, we we definitely see a lot of people when they when they're first getting started out wanting to to get it right away because they know it, it's if you try to implement it six months down the line, a year down the line, it's just going to be that much because you'll have that much more data that you inputted before, and it's just it makes yeah. it much easier to get it right at the beginning. And bad habits. And you know, bad habits, yeah. So eliminate the bad habits right away. Right. So, so what what was your process of buying and onboarding with Eco? Well, it was great. You know, I mean, we, we reached out and sort of was given several documents that I filled out and Ecos kind of built the back end for us. Um, and then from there, you know, I think that 
Um, you know, the biggest thing for me with Ecos is the customer support. You know, we've, it's not, I wouldn't say it's been flawless, but I don't think anything is really. And so what you're really looking for is a partner who's going to, you know, communicate with you effectively when you do have a problem or maybe, you know, like unforeseen issues. I think, you know, it's, it's all fine and well to try and identify all the, all the circumstances that you might encounter uh, in your back of house. But as we know, with small brewers, that's like a week's worth, right? And then two weeks later, you're doing something you never thought you'd be doing and, and you got to figure right. it out, you know, and you got to figure out how it works, you know, from an accounting and inventory management um, standpoint. So, you know, really having that access to that customer service space and to the community um, to help solve problems, to adapt and to change on, on the fly, I think has been huge. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, now, as you mentioned earlier, you, you've grown six times, six times growth within your distribution outlets over the past few years. And what we've seen here at Ecos is uh, Ecos customers have grown at a seven times higher rate than all other breweries in the market that did not use Ecos. And the source of our data was the Brewers Association numbers in 2018 and 2019. Um, and I guess we'll, I'll kind of throw this, ask you this question is, are, are you seeing more growth in your production side as well? I know your distribution channels have moved, but since you use Ecos, have you seen uh, production growth as well? Well, I mean, it, it, it'd be hard to say since we started out to begin with, right? Like we don't have any, we don't have any post numbers, right? Um, but I'll say it like in my personal job, you know, versus managing other breweries, I'm doing less time managing and data less time managing inventory really and less time doing data entry stuff and digging through cobwebs trying to figure out where something went wrong um i think you know a big thing we talk about here is doing what we're good at and what we're passionate about and what we believe we're good at is making beer and selling beer and that's what we're passionate about no one's really passionate about counting bags of grain or doing those things and so the more of that we can take off our desk and focus on what we think it is that we're truly good at um i think is probably the avenue that leads to that growth you know absolutely it gets you gets you doing things that you want to do and not things that you, you have to do and let let the, let ethos kind of handle all those other operations for you absolutely awesome and what we've seen a lot as well is customers that are using ecos they're, they're using all their data points in ecos to help raise capital and secure loans um, faster. So we have this great quote from Randall over at Live Oak Bank. While they don't require their customers to use it, they have found that breweries using a business management system tend to tend to report higher, more consistent operating margins. Um, do you have any experience on raising capital? Yeah, some and definitely a lot more in the past year as we dealt with different governmental en entities. The pandemic, I'm sure everyone that's watching has had those um those sorts of struggles i guess the right term but um you know to be able to very quickly and adeptly pull reports um show sales trends and then have that very seamless integration with quickbooks on the back end to pull p l's and to pull balance sheets that we know are accurate and true um has made applying for government assistance during the pandemic incredibly um important you know and then on the flip side you know we we try to be as transparent and communicative with our existing investor group and to be able to pull those quickly you know at short notice and and provide financials to them um has been huge in maintaining our uh, you know a positive and um ethical relationship with them absolutely just being able to have that data with with a couple clicks of the button um you know, here in Ecos, you, you get the real-time reporting to help you grow and scale your business. Now, within the software, you are able to build out your own dashboard for personalized business visibility. And we have over 150 pre-built out reports included. So that way the team can work more efficiently, which I'm, I'm sure you, you've you found out being able to pull those. You can export those, turn, again, turn them into the dashboard so you can visually see those as well. You see, are you seeing benefits from those? Absolutely. I mean, there's obviously like our go-to reports that we use for forecasting and inventory management and things like that. I, I think one of the, the fun parts about Ecos is that every once in a while, you know, we'll be having a meeting, we'll be addressing a certain pro problem or issue and go, well, how about Ecos has a report that will kind of show us where we're at on this? 
And so we'll end up using one of, like I said, the 150 plus pre-built reports um, to identify, you know, a trend that helps us discuss a unique problem or situation that we had not encountered prior. Absolutely. And that, that's a great thing, whether you are on, you know, production side, sales side with, with those 150 pre-built reports, more than likely you're going to find something that, that you can, that you can report on, or you can tailor to get you the information you need. Or again, you'll have that ability to create your own report. As well. Right. Well, awesome. Now I know you mentioned that you use QuickBooks on the accounting side and arrived on the point of sale right. side. What benefits have you seen um, integrating both of those into Ecos? Well, again, just I think I think the time saves is huge. You know, we're not we're not you know from a from a you know point of sale direct to consumer standpoint with our tap room, we're not spending hours the next day inputting sales into Ecos then having to translate that in the QuickBooks. It's you know really a matter of a handful of clicks, and if we've done everything right on our side. Um, you know, it kind of pushes through and we have accurate numbers within hours of, of opening in the morning um, and probably using less than 15, 20 minutes of time. Um, so, yeah, it's been it's been huge for us. I think, you know, we don't really know anything different, I guess, is the other thing we've done it since we did it from the very beginning. And then that's the way to do it. You, you don't really want to experience the other way of, of doing things. And we are seeing, you know, the average user with the uh, point of sale integration, they're saving anywhere between 10 to 12 hours per month. And then on the QuickBooks side and, and zero as well, um, they're saving anywhere between 15 to 20 hours per month. And again, what, what that's going to handle in relation to Ecos is all the transactions, the sales, the orders, the tips, discounts, taxes, that's going to be, that transaction will occur in the point of sales system that will sync into Ecos and then be able to deplete the inventory based on those transactions. And then the journal entries and invoices will be created and synced into QuickBooks for easy bank deposit reconciliation. Yeah. I think the, the thing I always say is, you know, we, like if you ever get behind, you know, a couple of weeks ago I was out of town and, you know, I had seven or eight days that needed to be imported. That took me like an hour and a half to do a week's worth of importing and translating over. If I had to manually do it, there would have been a whole day. Of right. doing, you know. And then that's not what you need to be doing after you've been gone for, for seven no. days. You have a hundred other things that you need to be worried about. For sure. And then also another favorite of everybody's is the TTB reporting. Um, here in Ecos, we do pre-populate the TTB and excise tax reports. That allows for faster reporting, being able to track individual products with specific tags. And users are, again, saving around 10 hours per week with the TTB reporting. Do, how, how You around the same, same time frame that you're saving with TTB reporting, Patrick? Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. <laughs> For sure, I mean it's it's a little bit difficult. Cause you don't, I only report quarterly, but right. you know it takes me twenty minutes to report now. And before it was a, a whole day, half day endeavor, depending on how ethical we'd kept records prior to that point. You know, for it all to be there, um, you know, pretty much seamless. We've not had any issues with reporting, and it's been super easy. That's that's what we we hear a lot. You know, people are before Ecos, they're spending hours, if not days, trying to get round up all those all the all the numbers they need to put in the report. As with Ecos, a few clicks of the button, there you go. You, you have your report for the quarter, and you can kind of set it and forget it. So, absolutely. <laughs> yep. All right. Awesome. Now, what we've seen, we've seen users that are using Ecos, they're they're increased cost visibility. So they're able to see what the COGS can yield for them. What we're seeing is a 10 to 15% boost in profit margins, which in turn will make it easier to make pricing decisions for your products. Um, have you personally seen um, any any of your COGS reports that, that have helped you kind of make those pricing decisions? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, it's where we start with it, you know. Um, you know, the beer industry is a little strange in that sometimes it's shelf dependent pricing wise. You're looking to hit a certain price, but like, you know, what we really look at, 
um, to begin with is our, our, our cost of goods. And so um, being able to see that, also being able to see the trends over time, if we're starting to see an increase in cost of goods, obviously, you know, the past year with cans has been a nightmare, but we can sort of see that nightmare displayed um, very, very uh, efficiently and, and quickly and, you know, use that information to determine pricing decisions. Yeah, just having that information again at your fingertips, and like you said, over the past year, every brewery's had to pivot to either switching the cans or going back to bottles. You know, since the tap sales kind of evaporated for a little bit for everybody, just you know, making sure you can see those costs of goods sold right in front of you. Right. All right. Now, on the inventory side, being able to see all your inventory real time in one place, tracking that inventory so you can forecast for your next orders, being able to plan for the future so you can analyze your cost patterns, being able to reduce shipping costs with better forecasting, and then creating those POs and inventory receipts right in the ECOS. Now, I know, as you said, you've kind of made that pivot to cans. I'm, I'm sure being able to see how much it's costing you to bring those cans in and then tracking your can inventory to make sure you're, you're not running out of those cans so you can keep up with your production schedule has been beneficial for you. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, and you know, I mean, like, we're a young brewery, and so to some extent, cash is key. And so keeping our inventory low has been important, and Ecos has really um, helped us do that, you know. Um, and so, you know, as we transition into future years in our company, when we want to maybe carry a larger inventory float of certain ingredients, because is also going to help us manage that and push that through. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, are you guys just, uh, is it just kegs and, and cans right now or do you do bottles as well? We've done a, a small amount of bottles, um, okay. large format bottles, but not, not too much. Perfect. Now, now, do you track all of the components as well in Ecos? Do you track um, on the cans, obviously your cans, the pack techs, the Absolutely. lids, and then obviously the kegs, the keg shell, the keg collars as well? Yeah, I mean, we have, like, I have an expense line on my P&L that is brewing supplies. And if it exceeds $500 in a month, I'm pretty upset. Like, we, you know, and we're shipping out forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 in ingredients every year, every month. So, I mean, like we have a very low threshold for non inventory ingredients. So everything that goes in the beer goes into Ecos into inventory and is built out into the product. That's awesome. That that's really given you the true cost of what it's costing you to, to make that batch right there. So that way, again, you know how, how much you need the price of that to make the margins. Right. That you need to make. Yep. Awesome. Another, another benefit that Ecos will provide is being able to drive operational efficiency. So improving the annual yield by reducing tank downtime, identifying areas to improve, improving team communication with everyone in one specific place, and then the mobile functionality that the software allows you means that your team can spend more time doing the fun stuff, making the beer and, and selling the beer. Now, do you guys utilize um, the, the mobile functionality? We do. Yeah. And we, I mean, um, you know, we don't self distribute, so we don't quite have like the outside mobile functionality that I know that it offers when you're in a, an account and can place an order and do some stuff like that. It's not really necessary for us, but what we use it as on our production side. Um, so all of our production team members have access, um, to tablets and they use them. We on the production side completely use the brew sheets. Everything's done in Ecos and is done real time. So, if we add 10 pounds of hops, that is expected to be done in real time. That 10 pounds of hops is removed from inventory and we move on to the next step for that batch. Awesome. Now, it sounds like you have the majority of your team members in Ecos using it, correct? That's correct, yeah. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, another another great benefit is unlimited users. So right. the, the production team can all have a login, the sales team can all have a login, management team. So just being able to track what, what everybody's doing in the software and having it all in one place, it's gotta be great for your company. Yeah, and having everyone on the same page. Yeah. You know, I mean, like, I think with other systems, you usually have like a point of contact, one person who does most of the work in the system. Um, and then they need certain things from other team members, but they have a hard time communicating to them what those things are sometimes. 
So as we get our team members more involved in ECOS, what we've seen is they see the bigger ecosystem of what we're doing. And so they start to make decisions and sort of on the fly affect the way they do something so that it works out well when it all comes back into ECOS. Absolutely. Just having that one one centralized hub for everything kind of goes back to back to the four pillars, the inventory production, sales and accounting as well. Right. Now, speaking on the sales side um, in ECOS, you are able to organize customer information, order history, contacts and sales activities. You can create your orders and invoices right through a mobile device as well. Get real time inventory levels from anywhere can create and manage daily activities for specific customers' accounts. And then I'd be able to identify between 10 to 15% more product to sell with accurate inventory levels. Now, as you mentioned, you, you go strictly through distributors in Oklahoma, correct? Right. How have, how have you seen the sales side being able to use or be utilized for you guys then? Well, I mean, I, I think that that's that's one place that we haven't utilized a whole lot partially because we have six wholesalers in the state of oklahoma and they all use a different system and so we're kind of at the subject to like we're a little bit subjected to their systems and their dealing with their their people um but i definitely think that we've used it to identify inventory issues at our wholesalers who are actually our customers you know from a very direct sense yep. um and then from a, from a retail standpoint um, you know, I think we try to maintain a database with it, but, you know, right now it's probably one of the underused sides of the, the platform there for us. Yeah. And again, even, even with the distributors, you still are able to create your invoices to those distributors. So you can yeah. see what, what you're selling them, uh, what, what keg shells they have out as well. That, that's gotta be a useful tool though. Absolutely. All that stuff is super easy. And, um, you know, I think. From a, from our sales from our in-house sales reps point of view, um, they can get on and see what we ship, what we have available. So if they're in the market at a retailer and the retailer's complaining about not being able to get something, they can see whether or not we have it. They can see whether or not the wholesaler has it, and, and kind of move from there. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And we will touch on our customer support. I know I know you had mentioned earlier you, you've had a lot of interaction with our customer support team. We do offer unlimited email technical support. You'll have access to subject matter experts with deep product knowledge and then have access to our knowledge base 24 um, seven. If you don't mind, would you, would you mind sharing a few experiences that you've had with our customer support and how they've helped you? Yeah, I mean, for sure. I worked with them in depth on an issue with the arrived sync early on in the launch um, that had to do with hours of the day. Just I think we were running some transactions after midnight and they were getting pulled into the next day when they needed to be on the previous day sales deal. And so that was probably like a two or three week process that, that you know, where I talked to someone every day, incredibly communicative. Um, it took us a little while to figure out what actually was going on. Um, and then when we did, the problem was fixed fairly quickly. Uh, and then, you know, just like anything else, like I, I guess, and, you know, we have probably weekly, I have something where it's just like, Hey, this isn't really working quite right and fix it. And it's always just within hours of the, the request being sent. Um, and then the other big thing I did was I redid my P and L last year. Um, and so I, I started messing around with a bunch of different item types and class types so that um, the reporting out of Ecos into QuickBooks would be more in line with what I wanted my p to to re reflect. Um, and I needed some questions on how that stuff worked. And so that was probably about a two week project for me that, that I couldn't have gotten done without the support team. That's awesome. Yeah, they're, they're, they're real knowledgeable, especially on the in integration. So when people get their integration set up, there's always going to be a lot of questions on making sure everything's mapped correctly, whether it's from uh, the point of sale to Ecos or Ecos to the accounting software as well. And just just having those knowledge experts help you and help the user get, get those integrations set up is a huge time saver. Right. Awesome. Well, I'd love, love to kind of throw this question at you, Patrick. Um, do you mind sharing a time when, when having the right information available to you in Ecos has helped you make a change in your business? Yeah, I mean, most recently we kind of revamped our product portfolio 
and um, we were able to pull up some fairly significant sales information um, and also, you know, some cost information on some cost of goods that a lot of kind of say, hey, you know, what, not only do we see this one product fall in sales in the winter time, we also see the cost of goods go up because of the inavailability of certain ingredients. Um, and so it kind of helped us make a decision to move that product to more of a biannual seasonal model um, and really focus on the profitability, of, you know, like highlighting a really product where it makes sense. Absolutely. And then just being able to log in to and be able to get those reports and, and see that information really helped. I'm assuming it really helped you make an informed decision. on that. Yeah. It's another one of those situations where we didn't show up to the meeting with the report. We started talking and we said, well, what does it say? And we just pulled it up right then. So I go, okay, well, this is what it says. That's awesome. Just can, can pull it up on either the mobile device or if you have your laptop with you. Can right. Pull it up right there. Well, awesome. Another question I have for you is what, what advice do you have for other brewers when, when it comes to investing into technology? Um, you know, I mean, my general my general advice is um, kind of goes back to what I said before is invest in those things that allow you to do what you're good at. Uh, and so. You know, if you think that you got into brewing because you're great at making beer or you're good at selling it or these things, I don't think many people got in and thought, I'm good at this because I'm really good at the back end of it, right? Like find things that make that easier so you can get back to doing um, not only what you enjoy doing, but what ultimately is better for your company, which is, is having people utilizing their talents in the right space. Absolutely. I, I don't I don't think there's too many people that get get into the brewing industry so they can do the do the accounting aspects or the any, any back end stuff. They, they want to be out there brewing. They want to be selling, interacting with the customers, you know, just um, user experience and, and kind of let Ecos kind of handle all the back end as well. Right. Awesome. Awesome. One more I have for you is how has using the right technology made you a better leader? Well, I mean, I, I tend to think leadership is about communication. And so having a technology that supports um, my knowledge base of my company and allows me to communicate in a more transparent and clear way, um, I think has allowed me to be more transparent with my employees, with my investor group. Um, and really during you know last year, that's been really important as we've not really known what's going to happen or those things. I think it's important all the time. Um, but the ability to, to have answers um, quickly um, and to, to, to really not limit the amount of times I say I don't know, you know, yep. um, I think is, is, is huge. Yeah, just being able to, again, ha have that right information for you, right? So you can, you can give a concrete answer right, right then and there. Right. Awesome. Well, great. Well, um, be more than happy to open it up for Q and A's now. Um, do want to touch on one thing real quick before we do. Um, we do have we did build out a tech stack, so an analyze we analyze of the breweries and cideries. You will be able to download that on our website at goecos.com. But again, now we'll be happy to open it up for any questions and answers out there. I think there was one over here about brew pub food requirements. Yep, in the comments. Yes, um, does Ecos cover brew pub food requirements? There's only focused on the brewery side. Really, um, with the with the integration with Arrived and Square, it's, it does handle some foods. It really handles the snack side of things. So if you have any snacks, uh, pop, soda, water that you may sell, we can account for that. It's not really covering the food, like let's say the burgers or anything like that. Now, now, do you guys operate any food on your facility, Patrick? We don't. I mean, we use Ecos for the snack side. We sell yeah. some pretzels and some chips. We also sell some non-alcoholic beverages that we didn't produce. Okay. Uh, and awesome. so we yeah, are able to bring those in the inventory and sell those, you know, just like we would sell a t-shirt. You know, that's the other thing that Ecos does is cover merch, which is good. Absolutely. Yeah. Any t-shirts, tin tackers, uh, pint glasses, and again, any inventory that you're selling, be able to run that through and track it through the software. Well, yeah. 
Let's see, do we have any other questions that came in? I, I, I guess I got, I got one more for you, Patrick, kind of yeah. on the, um, the arrive side. What, what kind of, what, with the integration that Ecos and Arrive is providing for you, where do you see the, the biggest benefit for your company with that integration? Um, I, I mean, I, I think it's in the time saved. Um, you know, like I said, we spend so little time on it that we can focus on other things like, um, you know, and, but, you know, Ecos being a central hub for inventory, I know in previous situations and lots of people deal with this where they have got dueling inventories. They've got inventories in their tap room and inventories outside of their tap room. And lots of times it's very difficult to move inventory between those two things or it can all get complicated and, and become a giant cobweb that you're trying to unsort for days. Um, so the fact that it kind of keeps it clean all in one place and that we spend very little time on it. I mean, I spent, I did, I typically don't do a weekend's worth of importing. Um, like I don't do it as, as the day comes. So on Monday, I've got to do Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And it took me, well, I think I started at five till five till three Eastern time. And while I was supposed to be on this at five after and I was done in time to log on, you know, it's just really quick and fast. Like, Absolutely. Um, being able to get it done in 10 minutes makes, makes the world a difference. Yeah. And I mean, like, you know, not to, not, not to come after people's jobs or anything. We're just lucky we've never hi had to hire anyone, but it is saving us from having to hire someone or have, have an offsite bookkeeping or anything like that. So we are, you know, while we are, you know, spending money on the platform, it is saving us in other ways. Saving Absolutely. us money. Absolutely. With, with all the um, information that ECOS has providing for you, do you guys have plans to kind of expand in the future and to obviously to continue to grow? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that, you know, you know, we're a company that, that is probably looking to grow maybe two or three times more at least and, and then kind of see where we're at from there. But, um, you know, I think ECOS will probably always play a role in, in the decisions we make regarding that. Um, just because that, you know, we, we rely on it so heavily. What would you say probably is the, the average amount of hours that you, you and your team are spending in ECOS on a, on a given day or, or given week? Oh, it's probably just a couple hours. I, it'd be hard to say because the production guys are using it in real time. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, if we have a new guy, there's obviously some onboarding and training that needs to be done. Um, but I probably use Ecos maybe like two and a half hours a week. Um, maybe between two and a half and five, just depending on what's going on. Yeah. Um, you know, some of our guys in the back might use, they're constantly using it, but they're also doing other things, you know, so. I would say, you know, I got one guy in the back who kind of handles all of our shipping and receiving, and he probably uses it the most just because that, that's probably the most arduous thing concerning ecos is the inventory receipts. That's not a bad thing. I don't think there's a solution. Like we get something in and it needs to be recorded and put in ecos. And that just takes, as far as the task go, that tends to be the thing that takes the most. Yeah. Out of time. And do you think, you think your team sees a benefit of, of, of being able to input that information in real time rather than having to wait and, you know, maybe do it on an Excel sheet later or pen and paper or later, like just being able to do it real time has, has made a difference for you guys? I think once we convince them that if they'll do it in real time, then they get to leave half an hour earlier. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like That everyone's got like the second in the moment to get on there and, and do yeah. it in real time. Then you're not, yeah, you're not doing it at the end of the day and you're not having to remember what what happened there what did i do you just do it in real time you know uh yeah. you'll save everyone time and grief and hopefully you get to go home a little earlier <laughs> that's all right that, that's a good motivating factor is you can go home or you can you know go go have a beer or get out of here that's so, right yeah <laughs> quick quick your time to, to having a beer is always always good right that's awesome that, that hey I, I like that that is for sure
Now, do they use, um, are they using their tablets, phones, or do you have a workstation laptop? Kind of how, how's the setup in the production area for your team? Well, we, we try to have tablets that are available. Um, and so the guys on the burst stand, there's a tablet there uh, available for them. Um, and then we have a couple, of, you know, but they all have the ability to access it from their phones as well if they need to. Yep. So we kind of let them determine what's best for them. Um, but, you know, mostly it's through tablets and phones. Um, we do have, you know, I think we're about to put a computer station back there for shipping and receiving and some of that other stuff just because the screen's a little bit bigger. It's a little bit easier to manage with a mouse. Just like I said, it's, it's a little bit more um, of an in-depth process than some of the other stuff. Um, and then they'll also, that also give our head brewer station to be able to build out recipes and build templates and stuff for recipes. I would say those two things are the things that take the most time. And it's not, it's not really because of eco. So I think it's just because those are the things that take the most time. Like right. Said, there's not really, there's not really any way to avoid it. And then and obviously, like, like you mentioned, being able to do it on a little bigger screen for, for people like me that kind of have fat fingers trying to navigate it on, on the phone or tablet, laptop works a little easier, but again, same functionality, whether you're using a laptop or uh, your phone or your tablet as well. Right. Awesome. Um, any other questions that anybody has for Patrick or I? All right. Well, I appreciate everybody joining in the chat. Want to appreciate or really appreciate you, Patrick, for joining us today. Any any last thoughts you want to leave the audience with? Oh well, man, I hope everyone has a good year. You know, hopefully, you know, it's interesting. In, in ten years, the last ten years in the craft beer industry have been mostly rainbows and sunshine. You know, and I think everyone's kind of taken one on the chin over the last year. Hope we can get back to, to drinking beer and enjoying each other and 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 selling beer and, and doing all those things that everyone got into the industry to do. That, that's right. Well, well, I'll drink to that. And yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully it's just we're, we're on the upslope now. So hopefully things things keep going up for everybody. Well, again, thanks, everybody. Thank you, Patrick. And uh, thanks again.